Firepower Threat Defense 622. We're going to talk about Cisco Threat Intelligence Director. We're going to focus on uh, a flat file uh, in regards to how we're going to ingest the data. So this is exciting stuff. Um, so the Intelligence Director allows us to operationalize intelligence data. Um, it allows us to aggregate that data and then obviously have defensive mechanisms in place, right? Uh, as well as analyzing the threats in our environment as a whole. Um, so an indicator itself is um, uh, contains at least one observable. That observable is uh, something like a SHA-256, for example. That indicator could also have multiple observables and it could be an and or situation, right? So observable uh, one and two uh, have to be in play or it could be observable one and two or observable three, for example. Um, I've already enabled it on the platform. If um, if you're doing this on the uh, virtual platform, you might have to add additional RAM to it. You can see the elements that we've had we have added. There's two next gen firewall platforms there, and then from a source perspective, we can gather uh, any source that we would like. In our case, we're going to go and grab uh, a couple of uh, links here: threat uh, expert as well as. Uh, that abuse uh, link as well, uh, full of uh, ransomware type um, uh, domains and URLs. Um, so we'll, we'll save these off into a flat file. Um, we could enter a URL, for example, uh, and pull the data. In my case, I just went and grabbed them and then put, uh, dumped them into a, uh, a file. You can see here, there's lots of options, SHA-256, domain, URL, IPv4, email to, email from. Um, in our case, we're just gonna do domain. Uh, we're gonna do this uh, fairly simple here. So we'll go ahead and we'll say if, if, uh, if this domain in this file exists, then we wanna trigger, and, and in our case, we're gonna block uh, that action. So we'll give it a name real quick. Uh, we can also give it a description. Obviously, uh, I'm taking the easy road here. Um, just really wanting to highlight the uh, capability and the simplicity of, of the offering. Um, so here we'll block it and we'll uh, go ahead and save this off. And you'll see that um, when we do that, um, we now have an option here that, that we can go back into. We can edit it. We can update it. Um, etc. Right, so so that's fine, and we can see the status is pending right now um, because it's uploading and ingesting that uh, data. Again, uh, we're going to go and grab another flat file, and you can see that we we've got taxi uh, support, we got URL, we have upload of sticks or a flat file. Um, so here we will give it a name, a description, and we're going to block as well. So we got these two new feeds. And the nice thing about this is, is when these are added, these are in play where um, things like our security intelligence platform um, th through Talos, Talos or whatever, um, it, it doesn't take effect until you apply the policy. In this case, we don't have to apply any policy. It's going to be in play. Um, and the default is for, for this to be enabled within the uh, access uh, control policy. So you'd have to actually turn it off. So now that we have uh, the sources, so we've got now the data to, to look for. So we've got our indicators with the observables. We're gonna grab um, one of these uh, URLs and we're gonna put it in our browser and we're gonna try to connect to it. And, and let's see what happens here. So you can see it's trying. Let's refresh the incidents page. And now we have an incident. Okay, and we know the action that was taken was blocked. And we know it's new. So the status is new itself. So we can see here that the states are new, closed, open, and rejected. So something like open would mean that you're actively uh, doing analysis on it. In our case, again, we have blocked this, but you still may want to send your team out to look at the asset itself, right? We can give it a tag as well, uh, so um, it's easy for us to parse later on. Um, so let's go ahead and grab another one, right? Let's just see how effective this is. So 
Let's go ahead and uh, I'll just uh, type this out here. All right, now if we come back, hit refresh, we can see now that additional indicator. And the other one tried to refresh. I might have hit it twice, so we've got two indicators there. Um, but now we see a, a, a single observation, right? It was blocked. Uh, we can come in and give it a name if we want, right? Here, if we want to specify uh, anything in particular, right? So in this case, I'm just going to append the host name uh, and give a high level uh, name of, of the actual threat. Um, but the good thing is, is that we block this, right? Um, and then we can set the 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 uh, a description. We can go ahead and move the status into open, and then finally closed. We could whitelist it as well, right? So very quickly, if this was something that uh, you know wasn't uh, a threat, um, we can certainly whitelist this to, to allow uh, access uh, from that user. So there we go. Uh, everything looks good. It's working as expected. Um, and you can see very simple uh, process to get this up and running and, and the value is tremendous, right? Because um, you're still getting all of those feeds from, from Talos, but now you're getting additional feed data in. Even though we took third party in the past, there's a little more that you can do with the intelligence director. Um, so I'm going to quickly edit the um, uh, search here on connections. What I want to do is have a quick look to see what we're seeing from a, a block perspective. Um, uh, in regards to connections. Let's see if they were actually blocked. So we did see that it did indicate that. Let's look at the connections themselves. We can see that we do get the block action. Um, and if we go to table view, um, now we get, get a little more uh, visibility. We can add additional columns. So we can see that it was a DNS block in this case. We can see that it was based on the threat intelligence domain name block. And again, we get all the other data that that, that is interesting. So the DNS query itself, uh, the policy that's associated. So it's fairly simple to set up. Um, I'm gonna do a few more of these, uh, taking in additional sources of data and, and running through the analysis a little more. Anyways, that's it.